Hello everyone, uh, back again with another part in the 2D platformer tutorial. Today we are going to be looking at art. I already have the scene pretty much set up. I got a camera in here. I got three layers, which is going to be the foreground, midground, and you can move this back forward if you want. It's pretty good where it is, I think. And then we have the background. And this is going to give us a parallaxing effect, so if I, uh, go ahead and extend the ground out a bit you'll see what I'm talking about you can see that the background moves slower than the foreground so you have a uh, nice effect there um, now main thing that you're gonna want to do uh, for art especially for 2d art is you're gonna want to be working on the grid and this grid is basically a definition of how pixely you want your game. So like, you're going to take this second number here, uh, so 1 by 2 would be 4-bit, 1 over 4 is 8-bit, 1 over 8 is 16-bit, 1 over 16 is 32-bit, 1 over 32 is 64-bit. Um, so we're probably going to want to do like 16-bit something like that um and to start off with i want to get the art for the ground so let's do that you're probably wondering okay well how do i actually sculpt it well what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into the uh edit mode for the brush which the shortcut to that is l1 square or it's over here in edit shape right here and once you come in here, we're going to want to move where you grab this to one of the corners. Preferably the left hand corner, um, but maybe if you're left handed you'd like to work with the right hand corner. But you're going to go up here and you're going to click on grip. That's going to allow you to change where you are holding the brush. And I'm going to pick, you can pick any on the side here in the corners I'm gonna pick the middle one and what this is gonna allow us to do is size down our brush and we're gonna size it down until it fits in um, that space like a perfect square in between the corners so now we have a brush that is going to directly paint on to, well, not paint, more of a sculpt onto these collision boxes that we have, pretty much. So I'm going to start off with some ground. So I want the color green. Let's get a nice dark green. Uh, depending on how you want to look it, want it to look, you may want to do a black outline. So why don't we do that to start off with it, actually. Alright, now we have a black outline to work with, and I'm going to make some grass. Get the darkest for an outline here in the bottom, and then we're going to fill in this with some lighter color. You can get different colors by doing that, as you can see. And you can already see some kind of pixelation just from uh, using the grid there's like edges and that's gonna basically help with the visual effect I also have another tool to show you for getting the visual effect just right to look like a 2d platformer or 2d game specifically let's get some uh, different shades in there so it's not just one giant patch of green do that for the edges as well add some noise in all right and now let's get some dirt below that so let's get a nice brown color and I don't want to fill in all of this so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stretch out our brush to the size that we want to fill in and if I can grab it, there it is. All right. 
then I'm going to shrink it back down. And I'm just going to sprinkle in some uh, darker colors in there. And you can get two different colors by using the color picker. And you can go ahead and do this. And we can actually uh, get some mixed colors in there. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so to do that, you're gonna, I guess, drag it over. That's what you wanna do. All right, now we have a nice changing color. That took a little bit to, for me to figure out. I'm not entirely used to the art, so. I don't even know if there's a tutorial on doing that. In the game, I mean. It's fine to have a little brown on the black edges on the bottom, I guess. We can fix that in a minute here. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, you can probably do this for the green up here as well, but I'm a bit too lazy to do that. Uh, no, it's just, um, it's just I don't I don't find this easy. I'm not very good with art. Um, I'm doing this for you guys. Hope you guys know that it's I'm doing the best job I can. Okay. All right, so now we have a uh, nice pixel graphic. And we are going to copy this. Actually, we can delete these. And what we're gonna do here is I'm going to grab this and then add it to a group with this. And then we are going to turn off the visibility of that sculpture. So now we have a ground piece that has collisions and only the graphical art is visible, which means that we can walk on it and it's going to look even more 2D than it did before. Because you can't see the background or the edges. It's going to, it would look more prevalent if we did this. Oop, don't like that. And you notice it's more of a scrolling effect now. And just to review some stuff. I have my camera here, and I have the FOV all the way down, and I have it zoomed out as far as it will go. So you're going to notice some uh, like blue tinting, and in order to get rid of that, you're going to go over to our Sun and Sky gadget. I have these pre-placed, pre but this is just global settings, Sun and Sky, gradient effects, and we're going to be using at least these two, and then this is just some music. Um, to fix the like fogging, we're going to go into the Sun and Sky gadget, open the properties, and the second tab is Sky Properties, and we're going to max that out all the way, and that would be, I believe, 9,999 meters or 10,000 meters, something like that. If you ever lose stuff in your scene, this is a great way to find it again, because it will pretty much make everything visible. Alright, now if we play, now it looks crystal clear compared to before. Alright, now let's do the player. And the player is going to be a little bit more difficult because uh, it's animated. So you're going to have to do multiple frames. Uh, again, I'm not entirely great at art, so if this looks bad, forgive me. 
Um, but again, you're going to want to start a new sculpt, edit the shape, change the grip point to which one you prefer, and then make sure it's small enough to fit in that box. It has to be perfect or else you're not going to get the resolution you want. And then let's start sculpting. I'm going to get a black outline around the box so I know my limit. It's going to help me stay within the lines, basically. All right. Now, let's see here. I want to make the don't hug me, I'm scared character. Because that seems to be the easiest thing to make. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little cube here. Uh, oop, nope. And then we can get like a darker shade for his arms and his legs. And then we're gonna have some legs kinda in the back, so we're gonna take this darker shade and we're gonna lighten it a tiny bit. Alright, um, now I'm gonna delete that. Now we have a first frame and we can take this frame and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to make the second frame. So we basically made his front leg move back a step and his back leg go up and now we're gonna make his front leg go back another step and we're gonna make his back leg go forward one. Now in this frame, we want to make the leg come down all the way, the back leg that is, and we want the forward leg come up. I believe that would be, no? Okay, so we want the right leg to be all the way back. And his back leg is going to be all the way forward and his front leg is going to come all the way forward and we're going to have it on the ground, I believe. And now we are going to copy these or that should actually, yeah. You can basically loop this animation, you can change these colors, but I'm a bit bit lazy, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make an idle animation, and we're just going to basically make him go up and down. So I'm just going to move his legs up two spaces. Alright, and now we have a kind of basic animation, and to get started with this, um, you may want to adjust the size of your collision box, um, but I'm going to leave that alone for now. I might edit that and cut that out, but for this tutorial, that's not what this is about. So. 
We are going to animate our little dude here. So, first of all, we actually want to double these because we want to get a backwards and forwards and we can just flip these 180 degrees and then look at that we got a left and right animation and we're gonna make an animation controller so we might as well name this animation controller I like to make it blue with the film strip and this guy is going to need a few variables and that's going to be our movement stick our movement and we're going to want also what else would there be hmm. if you want a jump animation you can have like a jump input to do this um I think that would be about it though, because we don't have a jump in animation. Um, if you want a jump animation, it's not that difficult to come up with one. Um, it's just basically the same process I'm going to show you here. So this is going to be, um, let's see here, idle left. idle right and then walk left and walk right now um, what this is, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some keyframes down, and what we want is to make these all invisible by default. And we are going to turn off preview invisibility if you haven't already. That way, we can see these. And we are going to, first of all, probably make them not collidable. Secondly, turn off visibility. Or you could actually turn them off altogether, I think. That might even save you some thermometer. Alright. And now we are just going to place a keyframe down and we want it to be like for his idle two seconds and that's going to be his left and I think this was our first frame on that and we're going to copy this. And I'm gonna delete, press triangle on something that's like cross stitched and you will delete any stuff that you've done with it. All right, so now we should get a basic flash between these two. And we are gonna make this loop. Alright, and now to see that in action, we are going to just place him on top, and going to want to make sure they're on the grid, if not, you're not going to have a f good time. we go and I'm gonna group them together and now when we play this 
We're gonna have a basic idle animation for left. And you can see it flashes. Um, that's from not doing that. So, this should look better. Yep. And I want it to be faster, so I'm actually gonna make it one second per frame. Alright. Cool. And now let's do idle right. We need the walking animations and let's do half a second each for these and we are probably going to want to use this frame that is already turned on and we want four frames total And what I just did is I copied them so we can go in and we can do L1 and then the left and right to go to the next keyframe. Now we're going to do the same for the right. Okay, so now that's all our animations done, but we want to make sure we put these guys together into one group, and I'm going to group everything so it's basically sorted by what type of animation it is. So we have multiple groups inside. So this is our left walking, this is our left idle. And now we are going to get make our right walking. All right. So now we're going to put all these together on top of each other. Okay, so this can happen. You can have a mismatch on the grid, that's fine. You can go ahead and just manually adjust it with the precise mover. And we're gonna go back to the grid snap. And now we are going to make some exclusive gates. And these exclusive gates are going to allow us to have basically one animation playing at a time. So we're going to do 2D character animation. And the name actually matters because that's what the exclusive gate uses to decide what's open. And we are going to have it automatic and we're going to have four of these and we're going to hook these up All right and now what we're going to do is I'm going to get a selector and we're going to use this selector to basically switch between left and right and we're going to want a splitter. Now I'm going to put this animation controller on our player or in our player's microchip to be specific. 
All right, and we want to get the left stick. And we're going to split that. And we want the X, and we're going to split it again. So positive is going to be right, and negative is going to be left. So B, we're going to hook up to positive, and A, we're going to hook up, hook up to uh, negative. So that way A is going left, and B is going right. We are going to make this a little bit bigger to have some more room. And then we are going to have some AND gates. And we're going to hook up the X to a calculator. And we are going to get the absolute value. And that's just going to give us a value between 0 and 1 to see if we are moving or not. And we are going to do another calculator equals 0. And then we want to not gate. And we're going to hook up the knot to our walking and the calculator to our idle. And then we're going to hook up our left to our left and our right to our right. And then the AND gates go into the exclusives. And then that's our animation controller. We're going to want to go ahead and group our little buddy here to our player. Not sure if he's off the grid or not. He's pretty much on the grid. So let's see, that's. One, two, three, three, one, two, three. Okay, so he is in the middle. And we're going to go ahead and group that with our player. All right, and we can go ahead and make our cube here invisible. And now when we play, that shouldn't have happened. Um, Um, so this microchip, we need to move it to be the part of the group and not, well, we need to take it outside of the group. That's what we want to do. There we go. Oh man. Alright, yeah. Maybe jumping a little bit too high. <laughs> a little too fast. Going to the ground, you know. That's some um, bug I need to work out with the character controller, but um, let's see here. We want to probably. Let's see, that looks good to me, other than the, this probably needs to be a lot faster. That still needs to be faster. Thank you. 
That's fine. His jump height is way too high though. Colliders aren't able to handle it. I'm probably gonna change this and cut it out. Um, so just a quick little bug fix here. If you have these set to not detect invisible things, you want them to detect invisible things. That's for the advanced one. There we go. Now we got a nice little 2D platformer dude. I think I'm going to change this back up to 5 meters a second. Yep, great. Cool. That animation could still be a bit faster, but I'm a bit too lazy to fix that. So we got uh, just 2D graphics in general, got an animation, how to make animation play and stuff like that. Now one thing that you're probably wondering, okay, what is this gradient effects chip for? Well, first of all, um, let's go over to the last page. And what this is, is a pixelation effect. So we can do this and just get a crap ton of scan lines. And you can also do this and get some pixelation effects. So now when we play that one, that's a little bit too much. Maybe in conjunction with the scan lines it's a bit too much. Lower it just a bit. Now you get some nice pixel pixely effects. You can make it as harsh as you want. I like pretty rough scan lines with some just a little bit of pixelation. And then you might want to turn up the saturation a bit. That's going to make everything pop out a bit. Now that looks like a 2D game. Look at that. All right. And let's just go ahead and make some obstacles, because why not? Let's actually make this a functioning course. Let's see. My creations some filters on. Alright, um, so as you can see, oh well, we can jump up there, but you can also jump on from this and this. There we go. Gives us a little bit of height advantage. And of course you could make graphics for this as well. And for the enemies that we had in the last gameplay tutorial. Um, now, since I'm not very good at art, I'm not going to bother doing these backgrounds. I was just showing them off, showing off what could you could do. But let's see if we can actually find some Pixar art that we can use from the Dreamverse. Yeah, there's not much. Uh, I don't think that one dude that made the 2D platformer has put out any of his stuff. So let's see here. You can also change up the sun and sky, get a little bit of brightness. You can remove the horizon definition. Let's see here. There's also images. Sky tint. Yeah. So we got the artwork with the animation. And that's how you make a 2D platformer.
Now isn't that nice? All right. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this uh, tutorial. I'm not 100% good with art, so it wasn't really my domain, but I did my best. I showed you how to get that those pixels on the screen, how to animate your player, how to move them around. Um, that's it for the 2D platformer series, unless you have any more requests. Um, just please note, I'm not very good with art, and I'm not very good with uh, sounds and music, so if you have any more questions, let me know. Uh, I'm going to be uploading a tutorial about how to do a custom rigged puppet and how to get the extra body parts moved and jointed and everything like that, as well as like blinking and stuff. Uh, that's going to be coming up most likely tomorrow or the day after. I don't know. It's, it seems like it may need a little bit more uh, work than this did, so. Uh, I hope you all have a great day. Bye.